Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you are already subscribed though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos twice a week. Please make sure to subscribe now, hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that will really help me know that you like to see more contents like this without further ado you guys let's jump into the video hi everybody how are you guys doing wherever you are whatever whatever time zone you're watching me right now i wish you good morning good afternoon and good night just in case i don't get to see you like you're seeing in your screens yes i am back again with another critical care nursing discussion for you and today we're gonna have your basic abg reading interpretation um assessment so this is another entry natin sa ating critical care nursing if you haven't watched the other critical icu concepts i created um i'll be putting the actual playlist link in the description box or whenever the icon button pops out click the one out because i'll be putting it there together with the other playlist i have on my channel this video lecture is available on my facebook uh page and also on my youtube channel so click that one out check them one out follow me and support me there now, before I further proceed, I would just like to grab this opportunity to thank you who's watching right now for showing up to the class. Thank you very much, and I'm proud of you. Um, thank you for your love and support. I want you to know that we're moving towards 25,000 subscribers really fast, and I hope that by the end of this year, we'll be able to make it to 50, 50K subs. I want you to understand that the numbers really matter because that will tell me that I've reached, um, you know, as many as I can when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, helping students and nursing professionals with learning, revisiting, reviewing some of the major concepts that we have in a nursing field. So the bigger the subscribers, that means the more significance I do in the community of nursing. And I hope that um, I'll be able to help you in my own little way. Um, leave a comment section below. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section below if you have anything, any discussion that you want me to do for you. And let's see what I can do to help you. All right. So, um, yeah, this is all about your basic ABG reading. And today I will make sure by the end of this lecture, this is going to be quick. I'll make it quick as much as possible. Um, uh, but, the, but the goal of this lecture is for you to be able to interpret your ABG, uh, ABG reading based on once you have the results in. All right. So let's just have a quick rec uh, a quick review on what to expect in today's discussion. We're going to discuss us the range ranges normal values some of the key points that i want you to be mindful of the causes for any metabolic or respiratory disturbances that we have and i'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step procedure to your basic interpretation for abg and we're going to end this lecture with some of the examples that i have for you to help you solidify that learning that you will have at the end of this lecture okay so let's move on so in terms of the normal values, this is very important because um, in order for you to interpret correctly your ABG and to know what's going on with your patient, uh, you have to know the normal values. Some of the results of ABG in the paper, it will actually tell you whether the acceptable values. If not, in the event that there's not, I highly suggest for you to memorize it by heart. So in the purpose of this lecture, there's actually three main concepts or main values that I want you to really be particular with in order for you to interpret your abg so we have here abg as you all know is what your arterial blood gas so our normal ph value in the body is what 7.35 to 7.45 all right so i want you to understand that anything below 7.35 you're moving towards the state of acidosis anything any ph value more than 7.45 you're moving towards the state of alkalosis. Pretty simple, right? All right. Now we have here your CO2, partial arterial pressure of your carbon dioxide. The normal carbon dioxide in the body is, um, what, what, what is this? Uh, uh, 35 to 45. 
as you can see here. CO2 is equal to 35 to 45, meaning anything that is greater than 45, any value greater than 45, you are moving towards the state of acidosis. And any value more than or less than 35, you're moving towards the state of alkalosis. Later on in this lecture, you will identify, I will tell you why is that. Now, uh, HCO3, what we know as bicarbonate, the normal value is what? 22 to 26. All right, so meaning any value that is lower than 22 of bicarbonate, you are moving towards the state of acidosis. On the other hand, any value more than 26, or did I say more than 22 or less than 22? Again, less any value of your CO2, uh, CO3 uh, less than 22, you're moving towards the state of acidosis. And any value more than 26, you're moving towards the state of alkalosis. All right, so here are some of the nor uh, normal ranges of your ABG. Again, that's pH of 7.35 to 7.45. And your partial arterial uh, pressure of oxygen, that's 80 to 100. Your CO2 is 35 to 45. In your bicarbonate, HCO3 is 22 to 26. Very crucial po ang ating normal values for uh, ABG interpretation. All right? So, I hope malinaw sa inyo ito. Malinaw sa inyo ito ang ating normal values. Ha? Pretty pretty straightforward naman siya. By the way, if you want me to give you a copy of this as your cheat sheet, you might print it and put it in your ID or whatever. Um, I'm planning to have this, my lecture materials available for my patreons i'm just having time i'm just learning how to set up that account my account on youtube to uh in a patreon state where i can give you freebies for um you know just for, to show my love and appreciation for you but uh, uh, definitely this one will be available for you let me know in the comment section if you want to have a copy of this all right so we're done with the normal values of your, now that you know the normal ranges of your pH, CO2, and CO3, I just need to redirect you or direct you towards some of the key points that I want you to be really familiar of. You guys, listen. So when you talk about your ABG, there's actually primarily two organs that, I mean, three organs that maintains the normal pH of the body. And any any disturbance in the level of pH, the body have uses different mechanisms to maintain the normal pH value. That system, that mechanism, one of those mechanisms is what we call the um, bicarbonate buffering system, which primarily involves blood, your lungs, and the kidneys. When you look at your ABG result, I want you to understand that there's two primary primary organs that is talking to you. Okay, that's how you're gonna look at it. Uh, your ABG result will. Uh, will we'll, um, we'll tell you what's the status of the lungs of the patient. And uh, the status of the kidneys. All right. So listen up. Um, your lungs primarily, the, the value of your ABG that will tell you about the function of the lungs and how is it keeping up the, how is it maintaining the normal pH value is the CO2. On the other hand, when you look at the ABG result and you want to move towards the HCO3, the bicarbonate, that talks more about your kidneys and how is it doing maintaining the normal pH value. All right. So let's discuss the lungs. So in terms of the lungs, though, you will see here if there's, a, for example, there's an increased uh, respiratory rate and increased tidal volume, you will see that the pH will go up. Hence, it move it uh, the pH of the blood, or pH the pH of the patient will go more on alkaline side. Okay. Now, if the respiratory rate, for example, is going down, and the to tidal total tidal volume is going down, the pH is go gonna go down, making your pH more acidic. All right. Now, when you talk about your kidneys, uh, by the way, the changes that happens in the lungs, you can see it very fast. You can see the manifestation in your patient very fast. It could happen quickly. Um, you can definitely see that the patient is developing hypoventilation or either be hyperventilating or um, 
uh, what's this, um, any difficulties in the breathing, any blockage in the respiration that could affect the function of the, ho- uh, of the lungs that can make any changes in your ABG result. So the changes can actually, you can see it and observe it very fast. On the other hand, though, when you talk about the kidneys and how does it affect the pH value of the body, um, you will sometimes see the manifestation slowly. It manifests slowly. Um, it could take hours, up to days, panga. So, when we talk about your HCO3, your bicarbonate, here's some concepts that I want you to be familiar of. When your bicarbonate, for example, is going high, you can expect that the pH as a compensatory mechanism will go high, leading the body to be in the state of alkaline. If your uh, bicarbonate is going low, uh, the normal tendency of the pH to have that mechanism of balance is to go low leading your body to be in a state of acidosis or acidic. Now, for you to better understand what is CO2 and bicarbonate, please be mindful of this concept. I want you to think that every time you talk about your CO2, you have to always remember that CO2 is naturally acidic in nature. All right? So meaning the pH is low. And if there's any abnormalities, abnormalities in the value of your uh, CO2, you can call that uh, you can call that uh, disturbance respiratory, based on your APG result. But on the other hand, when you talk about your bicarbonate, your HCO3 in nature, your bicarbonate is alkaline. That's why if your HCO3 is alkaline. Uh, HCO3 is high, the, P- the pH goes high. And if you talk about your bicarbonate, it, it, any abnormalities in your bicarbonate, abnormal values high or low in your bicarbonate, you are looking at a metabolic uh, compensation or metabolic yeah, mechanism, metabolic disturbance. So these are the some concepts of ABG that I want you to be really mindful of. Now that you know that your ABG is talking about your lungs, your blood, and your kidneys, and the correlation between the lungs and CO2 and kidneys and your bicarbonate, now we're moving towards the causes. What are the causes of your uh, metabolic or respiratory disturbances? Before we further proceed, though, I want you to, uh, I want to pause and give you time to subscribe, hit the notification bell for me as I'm grabbing my cup of tea. Thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate. Now, moving on. What are the causes of either respiratory or metabolic uh, disturbances that we have? Now, isa-isahin natin to based on the organ. We talk about respiratory acidosis and alkalosis first. You know that respiratory, this pertains to the lungs, right? Yes. And what did I tell you? Your ABG will tell you how the lungs is functioning and maintaining or doing and maintaining the normal pH body, the normal level of pH in the body. Now, respiratory acidosis, you guys. I want you to understand that the patient is in a respiratory acidosis phase or state if the pH value is what? Less than 7.35 and the CO2 is more than 45. Let's go back to this, um, what's this, to this diagram. Let's check. Oh. According to this, if uh, it's respiratory acidosis, if the pH is less than 7.35, so meaning 7.35, which is this, less than any value, 7.30, 7.20, something like that, and the CO2 is less than 45, this, less than 45, oh, I mean greater than Sorry, greater than 45. So meaning 50, 51, 60, 80, ganyan. So greater than 45, you're in the state of acidosis, respiratory acidosis. Now, what are the causes of your respiratory acidosis? Here are some causes. The main uh, cause is CO2 retention. What are the diseases that causes CO2 retention? Either be pneumonia, airflow, uh, airflow problems, airflow obstruction, that prevents the the proper flow or the the right flow of air 
in and out of the lungs. Paralysis could be one. Oversedation. Those patients that are heavily sedated, naka-fentanyl, propofol, midas, presidex, kung ano pa yan. Or any patient that is diagnosed with COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, such as asthma, emphysema, those stuff. That can cause respiratory acidosis, CO2 retention, too much CO2 in the patient's body. And I want you to understand that CO2 by nature is what? Acidic. Right? We can like discuss about this. So if you have a lot of CO2 in the body, the pH normally will go high, leading you to respiratory acidosis. Okay. So alkalosis, respiratory alkalosis. We're done with respi acidosis. We're moving towards respiratory alkalosis. Your patient is in a respiratory alkalosis if the pH value is more than 7.45 and a CO2 value of less than 35. Let's check it in the map or in this diagram that we have here. Anong sabi? Ang sabi daw, ang CO2 ko daw, ay ang pH level ko is 7 point, more than 7.45. O, ito ang 7.45, more than pa. So, pwedeng 7.50, 7.68, 7.8, mga ganyan, or 9, or whatever. Basta more than 7.45. At ang CO2 value is less than, or tama, less than 35. So, saan yung 35 natin? Ito. So, mas mababa sa 35, alkalosis. Okay? So, what are the causes of your respiratory alkalosis? Unlike sa respiratory acidosis where there is retention, excessive amount of CO2, kaibahan siya ng alkalosis because here you are losing a lot of carbon dioxide through the process of hyperventilation. <laughs> Maraming nasatapo, nasasayang na CO2 at fever. These are the one of the causes of your respiratory alkalosis. Alright? So once again, these are the causes of your respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis. Are we good? I hope this one is clear. Now, we're moving towards uh, one of the disturbances that we have. Metabolically speaking, we have metabolic acidosis and metabolic acidosis. In general, when you're looking at your ABG, you're looking at the these disturbances. Apat lang naman yun. So, metabolic acidosis natin, sabi, ang metabolic acidosis natin, if your pH value is what? Less than 7.35 and your HCO3 is less than 22. Okay, so i-check natin yun dito sa ating diagram. So, sabi, metabolic acidosis daw, kapag ang pH value mo is less than what? 7.35 which is you're moving towards the acidic phase, acidosis phase, and your bicarbonate. Naalala, nakikita mo na? Metabolic, you're looking at your HCO3, bicarbonate. Acidosis, uh, respiratory, you're looking at your CO2. Nakigets nyo? Nakigets nyo na yung correlation? Yes. So, metabolic, sabi, metabolic acidosis, HCO3 of less than 22. So, ang tayo, HCO3, ito to. So, any any value of your CO2, uh, CO3, HCO3 less than 22, it could be 20, 19, 15, 10, like that. That will tell you that your patient is on metabolic acidosis. Don't worry because later on, I will give you a step-by-step -step, uh uh, procedure or step-by-step -step actions on how are you better understand this concept to apply it into your practice. So what are the causes of your metabolic acidosis? So possible causes nito is DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, any renal failure. Remember, we're talking about your kidneys, AKI, uh, CK, uh, yeah, AKI, CKD, ESRD, those stuff. Diarrhea could also be one and increase serum potassium. Bakit nagkakos ng metabolic acidosis ang diarrhea? Kasi we're losing a lot of important hydrogen ions and uh, important electrolytes as we go on the state of diarrhea. Pag tae-tae na tae, maraming nawawala mga electrolytes can, which can lead to 
electrolyte imbalances and that could lead to your metabolic acidosis. Ang manifestation na to, magkakaroon ng changes. It can take into days pa nga or depende sa kung gano'n ka severe yung diarrhea. But definitely, we're looking at metabolic acidosis and these are some of the examples of the possible causes. Now, we're moving towards your metabolic alkalosis. Huwag malilito ha, nandito na tayo sa concept ng metabolic alkalosis. Metabolic alkalosis, sabi, if your pH value is less than 7.45 and your HCO3 is, uh, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Let me correct myself. If your pH value is greater than 7.45 and your HCO3 or your bicarbonate is more than 26. Oh, let's check in the diagram here. Sabi daw, kapag masasabi mong metabolic acid uh, alkalosis, kapag ang pH value mo is what? Is more than 7.45, so nandito ka, and yung CO3 mo, metabolic, is more than 26, so dito ka. Right? So it could be 30, 45 of your HCO3 or 50, any values above 26. And any values of your pH above 7.45. You can consider that as your patient is having metabolic alkalosis. What are the possible causes of metabolic alkalosis? Here's some. So we have antacid. Any patient that is receiving PPI or antacids. Vomiting because you're, re you're, removing, um, you're removing gastric secretion that can that contain hydrogen ions, which can lead to, which later on can lead to respiratory, ay, metabolic acid, ah, alkalosis. We also have patients receiving diuretics, mga pampaihinat and furosemide could be any type of uh, diuretics due to decreased serum potassium. Okay? So once again, these are the causes of your metabolic, uh, respiratory acidosis, alkalosis, and metabolic acidosis and alkalosis. I hope this one is clear. And we are now going to move to how are you going to step-by-step -step interpret your ABG in four easy ways. Okay. So step one, I want you to look at your pH right away. Let me change my pen color real quick. Once you receive your ABG reading, look at your pH right away. By looking at your pH, what you're going to don't just look at it, but identify if you have a uh, acidic pH or an alkaline pH. Remember that if your pH is less than 7.35, you can consider that as acidosis. If your pH is more than 7.45, that is in the state of alkalosis. Are we good? So first step, look at your pH. Second step here, assess your CO2. You guys, this is for basic ABG interpretation, okay? So as you can see, we're looking at primarily three values of your ABG report, pH, CO2, HCO3. On this, um, we're not going to pay attention so much with uh, other values such as your oxygen and your saturation, although they play a very important role in identifying the respiratory um, uh, status of your patient. Um, for the purpose of this lecture, let me just remind you that we're going to pay attention to pH, CO2, and your HCO3, okay? So... Uh, furthermore, we're going to say that once you assess your PCO2, you're going to identify if it's high. High meaning, is it more than 45? Or is it low? Is it less than 35? That's how you're going to assess it. Then, the third step, you're going to look at your bicarbonate HCO3, assess it. You're going to identify if it's high. Ask yourself, is it more than 26? Then you can say it's high. Or uh, is it low? Is it less than 22? Then you can say that it's a low bicarbonate. The last step, though, that you have to ask yourself or you have to do is to determine whether it's respiratory or metabolic in nature. Now, the way for you to identify if it's respiratory or metabolic is to look at which value between your CO2 in your bicarbonate is abnormal. You know that it is respiratory if the abnormal value is your CO2. You know that it is a respiratory distur a metabolic disturbance if your abnormal value, the deviation, the value that is deviating from normal, is your HCO3. 
You can call it metabolic. High or low, as long as it's abnormal, it's metabolic. Same goes as your uh, CO2. Now, there's actually an abbreviation, famous abbreviation that we use in the practice to help us uh, to aid with memorization, okay, for you to remember it. I don't know if you uh, heard about Rome, but Rome basically means respiratory opposite metabolic equal. Now, what does this mean is that respiratory disturbances, you will see that the pH, in correlation to your pH, you will see that the CO2, let's say, for example, CO2 is low, the pH level will go high. Hence, respiratory opposite, the direction of their values is opposite. For example, naman sa metabolic, metabolic equal, any disturbance in your uh, HCO3, let's say HCO3 is high, you will see that the pH value goes along with it. It's also going to go up. So equal. When you talk about metabolic disturbances, you will see what? That the, the correlation to the bicarbonate in the pH is somehow what we called uh, uh, directly proportional. Meaning, they it goes on the same way. Isa tumaas, isa rin tataas. pH din tataas. On the other hand, when you talk about your respiratory disturbances, kaya siya tinawag na respiratory opposite, is that because the correlation of CO2 in your pH is that it is what? Indirectly proportional. Opposite sila palagi. Pag ang CO2 mo, malalaman mo na respiratory disturbance to kapag ang CO2 mo is magkaiba yung galaw ng CO2 mo at pH. Pwede ang CO2 mo is mataas, ang pH mo mababa. Ang CO2 mo mababa, ang pH mo mataas. Then you can say that it's a respiratory disturbance. Then identify if it's alkalosis or uh, acidosis. Don't worry because on our examples here, I will make sure that you will better understand this. But before that, uh, uh, before the test, by the way, I want you to put your scores down below in the comment section uh, so I can identify if you really understood this topic. Okay? So don't be shy. That's your, uh, I would just like to know the effectivity of my lectures. Now, before I proceed, I will give you time to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notif bell so you won't miss out any of my future uploads. Go! All right, you guys, thank you so much for doing that. Now, let's proceed with some of the examples here to help you solidify your learning for today. So I'm going to give you normal values. And for again, for the purpose of this lecture, we're not going to pay much attention to your partial arterial pressure of your oxygen and your saturation. Although they play, again, uh, we're not dismissing the fact that they're very important in assessing the respiratory function of our patients. For this specific lecture, you guys, pay Pay attention only to your, what's this, your pH, your CO2, and your HCO3. All right. So I will give you the values and we were, you're going to answer them on your own and put your scores on the description box below. Okay. Then later on, once we have it figured out, I will tell you this, the, the answer. I will reveal the answer. Okay. So in the first example, we have here a pH value of what? 7 point, let's say 7.38. And then partial uh, oxygen level of 110. Let's just say CO2 of what? 42. And your bicarb is 23. And then your saturation, let's just say 97. Okay, again, for this lecture, it is regard muna natin to si saturation and si oxygen. Focus lang tayo dito, mga mami. Yung pH mo. Sasagutan natin sila ha. Let's just say that this is your ABG values, your ABG report. We're going to use this these steps that we just discussed earlier on to I I mean to identify if what uh, respiratory or metabolic disturbance this patient is having. All right? The ABG results. So, na-receive mo na yung ABG report. Ito siya. Nakita mo yung pH mo. Is it normal? 
first step daw, sabi, identify mo yung pH. Then, CO2. Second step, identify mo naman yung CO3 mo. Third step. And then, the fourth step, we're gonna identify if it's respiratory or metabolic. And then, we try to validate it with the using the abbreviation ROM, respiratory opposite and metabolic equal. Alright, so sagutan na natin to. Ang pH mo daw, 7.38. Is it normal or abnormal? Is it acidic or alkalosis? Well, 7.38 is considered what? Normal po. Normal value po. Why? Because the normal pH value, kung nalilito ka pa, ito siya, oh. Normal pH value natin is what? 7.35 to 7.45. So, normal ba to? Normal. Okay. Ang CO2 mo naman, ano to? Normal, abnormal? High or low? Si Oto po po, actually, this is normal. So, bakit siya normal? 42. Ito ang normal value mo, oh. Saan yung si Oto? 35 to 45. Ah, nasan ka dyan? 42. Pasok sa 45. Pasok. So, normal. Ang bicarb mo, 23. Is it normal or abnormal? Is it high or low? Ang sagot, it is normal. Why? Because your normal value for your bicarb is 22 to 26. So, 23. Pasok sa 22 to 26. Pasok. Wag siyo nga. So, unfortunately, which this is one of the things that we haven't discussed yet. This is actually when you reach this point where your pH, your bicarb, and your carbon dioxide is normal. All in normal range. Congratulations. Because you have a normal, normal ABG. Yay! O, oh, diba? So, yun na siya. Pag yung tatlong yun, normal, normal ABG. Wala tayong problema. Move on ka na, mag-happy-happy, mag-take ka na ng lunch. Okay? So, yun na yun. So, tapos na tayo. You don't even have to proceed to step four, which is determined if respiratory or metabolic. It doesn't make sense. All of it is normal. Girl, move on. Proceed na tayo. Saan? Sa example number two. So, sa example number two natin, you guys, we have here... Change ko lang yung pen color ko. A pH value of 7.27. Oxygen of, let's just say, 80. CO2 of 53. Bangat ng 53 ko. Ulitin ko kayo sulat. Sorry. 53. A bicarbonate of 24. And an oxygen of 94%. Again, on this example, we're not going to talk about your, uh, what's this, your oxygen and your saturation. We're going to pay attention to your pH. Your pH, is it alkalosis or acidic? Is it high or low? So this is actually in an acid phase, acidosis. 7.35 to 7.45 is your normal range. Mababa, mataas, mababa. Gets? Gets. Now, yung carbon dioxide mo, 53. Is it high or low? Is it? It is high. Why? Because your normal value is what? Paulit-ulit tayo dito. Carbon dioxide, 35 to 45. 53 to. Mababa, mataas. Mababa. Huwag siyo nga. Next. Bicarbonate, is it high or low? It is normal. So, na-identify mo na ito, napafollow mo na itong 1, 2, 3 steps natin. Dito ka na sa pang-apat. Determine if it's respiratory or metabolic. And how are you gonna do that? You have to look at your CO2 and your bicarbonate, which one is abnormal. In this scenario, we have a abnormally high carbon dioxide. So you will say this you will say that this is since the carbon dioxide is the one that is abnormal this is more on a respiratory state. So respiratory respiratory pH is acidosis acidosis. Gets? Now identify natin siya confirm natin siya gamit yung room respiratory opposite metabolic equal. Tingnan mo tong galaw na mga values mo. pH mo pababa gets, CO2 mo pataas. Opposite sila, right? Respiratory, opposite, metabolic, equal. That's how it works. Gigets, gigets. Hence, the answer is respiratory acidosis. Very good naman sa mga nakatama dyan. Mag-proceed na tayo. Question number three. 
So, sabi dito, dito naman sa question number 3. Example natin, ABG result mo just came in. Your pH is 7.51. Your oxygen is 98. Sabihin na natin. Your CO2 is at 29. And your CO3 is at, mm, let's say, 22. And your saturation is, sabihin natin, 97. Oh, oh. This is your, these are your values. So, i-cross out na natin to for the purpose of this um, lecture. Cross out na natin yung oxygen. I-cross out na rin natin yung saturation. Nilagay ko pa rin sila dyan kasi importante pa rin sila, no? Para makita natin yung, para hindi naman sila magtampo. Pero dahil nga, nagdi-discuss tayo ng basic ABG interpretation, ito po tayo. Tatlong values lang. So, identify na natin. So, pH mo, is it acidosis, as, uh, alkalos, acidosis or alkalosis? Is it high or low? This one is actually alkalosis. And it's high. Okay? Next, CO2 mo. Next step, sabi, huwag mawawala dito sa step na to. Next step, CO2 naman. Pangatlo, CO3. Then, identify mo, respiratory metabolic. Tapos, gamitin mo yung abbreviation na ROME. Okay, so CO2 mo. Ang sabi, ano yung CO2 mo? Is it high or low? This one is low. So, pababa. CO3 mo, high or low or normal? Normal. Okay? So, base pa rin to sa mga normal values natin dito sa baba. Baka magtaka kayo. Where, do, where am I getting? How am I able to identify using this normal values? Okay? Okay, so now that you already identified, oh, this is not a normal uh, ABG. I, my pH is alkaline. I'm more on the alkalosis state. The next step, last step, is actually determine whether it's respiratory or metabolic. And how are you going to identify that? Look which between your CO2 and HCO3 is abnormal. In this case, the one that is abnormal is your uh, CO2, and it's low. So, you will say that this is what? Since CO2 is the problem, you're talking about respi. Respiratory. Look at your pH. What is this? Alkalosis. Alkalosis. You want to you use the ROM to determine that? ROM stands for what again? Respiratory opposite, metabolic, equal. So, tingnan natin yung galaw na mga numbers. Sabi, respiratory opposite. Oh, tama ba? Ang pH mo pataas. Ang CO2 mo pababa. Opposite. Hindi sila nagtatagpo. Indirectly proportional. Are we good? Magaling, magaling naman. Ang galing naman talaga ng mga kabagang. Oh. Diba? Nakakuha ba? Nakukuha na? Okay, sige. Mag mag last two examples pa tayo para kuhang-kuha mo na talaga. Next example. Oh. pH value natin is what? 7.30. Your uh, oxygen is, let's say, 87. Your CO2 is at 37. Your bicarb is at 20. And uh, your saturation is 99%. Uh, like I said, we're gonna disregard for the meantime your oxygen and your saturation. We're gonna move towards checking your pH. How much is your pH? Is it high, low, normal? Acidosis, alkalosis. This one is actually very low. So it is acidosis. Very low, right? Low pH. Huh. Automatic, you will find out. Huh. Acidic pa lang pasyente ko. Next, next step natin, identify your CO2, your carbon dioxide. Is it high, low, or normal? This one is actually normal. Tama. Very good. Pasok ba siya sa banga? 35 to 45 CO2. Ang value natin, 37, normal. Bicarbonate, is it high, low, or normal? This one is actually low bicarb, 20. So, ano to? Now, you will proceed with the last step, which is identifying, because you know that this is not a normal ABG. You will identify whether it's metabolic or respi. How are you going to do that spot or spot between a CO2 and HCO3? Which one is abnormal? In this case, the abnormal is your HCO3, your bicarb. Automatic, you will think about what? Metabolic. Remember, any disturbance in your bicarb, you're talking about 
your kidneys and your kidneys pertains to your metabolic compensation. So metabolic, what? Look at your pH, acidosis. Very good, you guys. Very good. Proud of you. Now, let's use the abbreviation Rome para ma-check talaga natin kung tama yung Rome, ha? Tama yung sagot natin. So, Rome stands for respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. Look at the movement of the values of the numbers of your uh, pH and bicarb. Metabolic equal. Your pH is low and your bicarb is low. Both of them are going in the same direction, which is going down. So, Rome is right. So, sa lahat naman nakatum- Rome is right. Sa lahat na nakatama, metabolic acidosis is the right answer. Very good. Very good. Now, last example lang tayo dito, ha? Uh, bilisan na natin to. Let's say, on our last example, that your pH is at 7.49. Your oxygen is at 100. Wala tayong problema sa saturation. Ay sa oxygen. CO2 is at 42. I guess, yes, 42. And bicarbonate is at, let's say, 29. Saturation-wise, wala tayong problema. We're at 100. So for the purpose of this lecture, we're not going to discuss about your saturation and your oxygen. Now, let's proceed with the steps. First, identify your pH. pH is at what? 7.49. Is it alkalosis, acidosis? pH is high or low? Now, this one is alkaline. Oh, let me change my pen color. This one is alkaline. Alkalosis. Why? Normal pH level is 7.35 to 7.45. This is at 7.49. So, it is what is it? It is high. Okay, next, identify daw natin, CO2 natin. Is it high, low, normal? This one is actually normal. 42. Why? Because our normal value for CO2 is 35 to 45. Very good. You got that right. Now, CO3, HCO3 natin, 29. Is it high, low, or normal? This one is actually high. So, ang movement natin is pataas. 22 to 26, your patient as your ABG value is at 29. Obviously, it's high. Come on. So, next step, fourth step is you have to identify whether it's a, a metabolic or respiratory. How are you going to do that? Check which between your CO2 and bicarbonate is abnormal. So, in this situation, in this scenario, your CO2 is actually normal. The one that is abnormal is your bicarb. So anything that's talking about your bicarb, you're going to see that and going to look at that as any metabolic compensation. So that means metabolic. And look at your pH, alkalosis. Malinaw tayo doon. Now let's verify this using the abbreviation Rome. Respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. Look at the movement of your pH and bicarb. Metabolic, sabi natin, di ba? Your bicarb is going up and your pH is going up. Right? So both of them are directly proportional. They go on the same way. All right, and that concludes our lecture for today. I hope you have a great time, and I hope you really learned something regarding this uh, topic about your ABG. And let me know what's your comment in the comment section below, what you guys think about this lecture. I really hope that you learned something, and... Um, Help me out. Spread the news about my channel. Tulungan nyo na nga ako. Ipamalitan nyo na sa radyong sirang pinakabago, pinaka-fresh at pinaka-libreng nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. And I'll see you again next week for another lecture. You have a good one. Goodbye!